How will the Panthers attack day two of the NFL draft? We'll talk about it right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Fridays throughout the offseason, I'm right right here on the show answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions either at me or DM me to get your questions in for this week's edition of the weekly Friday mailbag right here on Locked on Panthers. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code Locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. We are just over two and a half weeks from the beginning of the 2024 NFL draft in Detroit, Michigan, and we are Ever so close to finding out what the Carolina Panthers are going to do on day two of the draft as they have picked 33, 39 in the second round and pick 65 to start off the third round on Friday evening there in Detroit. And to help us figure out what the Panthers may do and what their options may be, we're going to talk to Jordan Reed. He is an NFL draft analyst for ESPN.com. He is a North Carolina native, played football as a quarterback at North Carolina Central, still resides here in North Carolina area, and excited to get his perspective on what he thinks the Panthers should do on day two and also some players that may be on the board on day three that can help that team, help this team rather. So we'll talk to Jordan Reed in just a moment here on Locked On Panthers. Back here on Locked on Panthers and, as promised, Jordan Reed, ESPN NFL draft analyst and, more importantly, North Carolina native here on the show. Always good to talk to someone from the Tar Heel State. Jordan, how you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm glad you said North Carolina native. It's a state that's near and dear to me, so excited to be on today. Yeah, no, appreciate you uh, taking the time. Of course, man, looking at the Carolina Panthers, got the draft coming up at the end of the month, and this is a team coming off a 2-15 and season that has a lot of areas to fill, a lot of needs still after free agency where it was clear what this team wanted to do was set up Bryce Young to have success this season or at least give him an opportunity to be evaluated, fixing the offensive line by signing Damon Lewis and Robert Hunt. Those contracts, pretty Pretty big money there, so you can question whether they spent, spent too much, but they maybe not be too much if you want to find a way to keep your quarterback upright, trade it for Deontay Johnson. As you look at it, looking at day two, the Panthers have picked 33 and 39 in the second round, pick 65 to start up the third round. What should be the priority for the Carolina Panthers once they are finally on the clock on Friday evening in Detroit? Well, I think it has to be two out of the three positions of wide receiver, center, or edge rusher. I still think they need a lot of help at all of those positions. And I like the Deontay Johnson acquisition. Um, and I honestly have liked what Dan Morgan has done this offseason just because it seems like there's an actual plan in place now. And what I mean by a plan is that you can really see him laying the breadcrumbs of where what he wants his team identity to be. You hear him say he wants dogs all the time. I think Damian Lewis and Robert Hunt definitely are both of those guys. But when I think of shorter quarterbacks and, you know, myself being a former quarterback, a shorter guy as well, interior pressure is something that always has a negative effect on those shorter quarterbacks. So what Dan Morgan probably was thinking was that I need to go ahead and get these interior spots solidified. And that's what he did with Robert Hunt and then also Damian Lewis. And then with it being a strong wide receiver class, now we put ourselves in better position to acquire one at whether it's at 33 or 39, them having two uh, second round picks. I think that's absolutely huge for them just because they're going to be in the wheelhouse of getting some top end talent at this wide receiver position. Yeah. Let's talk about the three positions that you brought up there, starting off with wide receiver, Deontay Johnson, great acquisition, effectively giving up a six round pick to get a guy who's been a pro bowler and can be, de facto number one wide receiver. Now, is he one of those alpha guys? I'm not quite so sure, but he can separate. He can do something. A lot of the guys outside of Adam Thielen could not do last year here in Carolina. I still feel like they need a wide receiver. Just looking at your board and just who you talk to, who do you think is available there at 33? 
That's a great question. Um, we'll have to see on draft day, but just based on my projections and what I've heard, um, some names I think that could be there is Keon Coleman of Florida State, Xavier Leggett of South Carolina is another name. I really like both of those names for them. And another one that I see is very popular um, around Panther circles is Lab McConkey of Georgia. Yeah. I think three of those guys, either, either one of them, honestly, any of those three would be great ads for the Panthers. And each one of them is different in their own right. And I think when you're building a wide receiver core, you kind of want to build it like a basketball team. They already have um, that that shorter guy that really is just a natural separator in Deontay Johnson, but they still need that alpha big guy on the outside. I think Leggett or Keon Coleman uh, fits more into that mold, while Lab McConkey is kind of similar to Deontay Johnson. Um, that's yeah. right about around six foot, six foot one. That's just your natural separator that really was born uh, to be a route runner. I call it having a PhD in route running. That's exactly what Lab McConkey has. Yeah, we heard that a lot from uh, Steve Smith Sr., also former Carolina Panther <laughs> and a receiver the Panthers honestly could use, a type of Steve Smith uh, player here moving forward. I mean, of those three guys, I, I love Keon Coleman. I know there's been some mixed messaging as far as how many people do love him, whether he's a first-round guy or he's not, because all throughout college football season, it felt like outside of Marvin Harrison Jr., and Malik Neighbors, like he was a number three guy, maybe a number four guy behind Roma Dunze once people finally caught on to how good Washington is. Like that would be my top guy. Like how, how would you rank those three just looking at them? As you know, you like all of them to Carolina, but of the three, of McConkey, of Leggett, of Coleman, who do you think would be your top guy if you were sitting there as Dan Morgan? Well, so just based on my draft board, I have it Coleman, Leggett, and then McConkey. Um, okay. That's how I have them ranked right now. But of course, when you're building a draft board for a team, it's always going to be different. But once again, the Panthers don't have that big outside boundary receiver. Um, that's just not on their roster right now. They have that natural separator in both Thielen and then also McConkey, who's still in the roster, but they don't have that big outside guy. So I think Coleman or Leggett would be better for what they're looking for right now. Okay. Looking at outside linebacker, the edge rusher spot, Trading away Brian Burns is uh, a curious decision. Uh, I understand that the relationship broke down there between the player and the team, but you're not going to get any better by trading away first-round draft picks that were successful, and we've seen that with McCaffrey. Chasing after quarterbacks led them to trading away McCaffrey. Same thing with DJ Moore. Didn't really make a lot of sense at the time. You're going to draft a rookie quarterback, number one overall, but you're not going to give him a wide receiver to throw to in a poor receiver market, and we saw how that worked out with Bryce Young last season but now trying to replace Brian Burns, who they had multiple opportunities to get rid of, and they decided that it would be harder to replace a Brian Burns than it would be, per se, Christian McCaffrey or DJ Moore. They're going to find out about that this season, as I like the signings of Wunham and Clowney, but I, I just don't see how those guys are going to be up to the standard that Brian Burns would have been next season and beyond for the Panthers. Looking at your board there in the second round, which I imagine probably at 39, maybe 33, they'd be looking at an edge rusher, who are the guys that you expect to be there and you would think that the Panthers should prioritize if they're looking exactly to get an edge rusher in the second round? Well, two that really come to mind is Chris Braswell of Alabama and then also Adisa Isaac of Penn State. Those two are your more so of your second round guys that could go somewhere in the top 40 to top 45. But best case scenario for the Panthers, and not saying that he's going to be there, but I think <laughs> they should run to the podium if he is, and that's Chop Robinson. Of Penn okay. State, if he somehow falls out of the first round, he definitely would be my first pick at 33 just because he brings a different skill set than what they don't have on the roster right now. And I'm with you. I like Wanham and I like Clowney, but both of those guys are more so of your number two type of role player type of rushers. And Chop is that, but the Panthers just need players off of the edge right now just because they don't have any depth there. And then losing you to Gross Matos and then also Brian Burns, they have a lot of production to replace coming off the edge and they're still at the point of where they just need bodies right now to where they can throw some waves at different teams and chop. I don't think he's ever going to be a number one. Um, and I don't think Braswell or Isaac are ever going to be a number one, but right now I think the Panthers are in a situation of where they're still rebuilding, especially on that side of the football and right. they just need bodies. They just need talent at this point. They're just collecting talent. They don't need to more worry more so of who's going to eventually turn into a high end uh, player at the position right now. They just need to collect talent. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Amari Barno, DJ Johnson, who they spent picks on the last couple seasons, haven't really shown much on the field so far. And Johnson's a guy they traded up the third round to get him, and he's 25 Dan years old, and he's a project. So we'll see how that's going to work out for them. Uh, but also looking at it, uh, Darius Robinson, I don't know, where do you have him on your board? Because I know he's somebody who some people have 
late first round. They have early second round in the Panthers. That's where they're sitting. So he could fall to the second round if you wouldn't want to say it's falling. But he's someone apparently who really uh, shine at the senior bowl and at the combine. Where do you have him listed? And is it possible that maybe he's there? I guess certainly it's possible. But do you think that would be the case? It's kind of TBD to be decided, <laughs> to be determined, honestly, just because it really depends on who you ask. Um, I had him going 16 overall to the Seahawks in my mock draft a couple of weeks ago. Well, and then also <laughs> some people you talk to, they could say um, there's no way he gets out of the back end of the first round to the Lions at number 29, I believe it is, uh, the pick that they have. So it just really depends on who you ask. But it wouldn't surprise me if he's there in the second round at 33. There's so many different outcomes depending on who you ask. And I think it's because – a lot of people don't really know where they want to play him. Some people like him more so inside as a defensive tackle um, that can play sparingly outside, while there's some other people that think he's strictly a defensive end that can reduce down inside in some situations. So I think the big mystery with him is just where exactly do you play him? That's kind of – or I should say that's the big reason why a lot of people don't really know where he's going to go right now. So once again, it's kind of TBD with him to be determined. We'll see on day one and also day two of the draft if he's still there at number 33. I mean, as I've been telling my listeners, if they can get one of the Robinsons, either Chop or Darius, yeah. I'll be happy if they can make that happen, whether at 33 or at 39. Let me take a quick pause. I want to come back and ask you about that third position. And there's another guy who resides in the state of North Carolina. A lot of fans are wondering who potentially could be there on night two of the draft that they could potentially go after. So we'll talk about that here in just a moment on Lockdown Panthers. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. If killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take the guess work out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed all right back here on locked on panthers julian council jordan reed espn nfl draft Analyst, North Carolina native from High Point, by the way, North Carolina Central, former quarterback there with the Eagles there in Durham, the real school in Durham. Don't be fooled by the other school there wearing uh, the wrong shade of blue. We're talking NFL draft, looking uh, in particular at night two of the draft, where the things get started for the Panthers. It's a possibility maybe they trade up to the first round. Don't think that would be the wisest decision for the Panthers, considering uh, the lack of draft capital and the fact that they kind of need to just look towards just building out the, what they have and waiting for the down the road as they are starting this rebuild with Dave Canales as the head coach, Dave Morgan, elevated as a GM. You brought up another position of need, center. And I'm glad that you said that because I've been talking about this for a couple of months now since the Panthers lost Ryan Khalil, who they drafted back in 07, the last time they drafted the center. They tried Matt Paradis out. That didn't really work out. They tried Pat Elfline out. That did not work out. Bradley Bozeman worked until it didn't this past season. And they're going to go with Austin Corbett, who's in the final year of his deal. So that does not appear to be a long-term solution for them. You mentioned Zach Frazier out of West Virginia as a guy that you like for the Carolina Panthers. Who else do you like, and why do you like Zach Frazier in particular for the Panthers as a center, probably night two? And would he be available there at even 65 if they want to wait until the third round to address that position? I don't think he's going to be there at 65 just because I think there's a bit of a drop off after the first four or five guys in this draft class at center. Um, Jackson Powers Johnson of Oregon is one name that could be there um, at number 33 overall. I think if he's there at 33, you definitely run to the podium with his okay. name on it, um, considering all the, the durability and injury stuff um, that I'm hearing about him checks out. Um, so if he's there at 33, I definitely think they end up making the selection there. But Zach Frazier just makes so much sense for them just because he has that dog mentality that Dan Morgan talks about all the time, a former wrestler, which is something that a lot of NFL teams really value just because they have natural leverage. They have really good grip strength, and they're just used to those one-on-one -on -one battles in the trenches. And for the Panthers, let's just go ahead and get our guy. No more outside free agents, um, no more free agent acquisitions, trying to make it work, moving guys from guard to center. Let's just go ahead and draft our guy and just plug and play him there. And, you know, they're going to give a Austin Corbett every opportunity to start. But if you take a guy in the second round, especially that high, 
nine times out of 10, they're probably going to end up starting just because you use such high draft capital on a player, player like that. So Zach Frazier makes a lot of sense. But if you're looking more so uh, day three, Cedric Van Pran Granger of Georgia is another that I think fits a lot of um, characteristics that they're looking for at the position. So and there's plenty of other later round names. Dylan McMahon of NC State could be one. Matt Lee of Miami is another. Bo Limmer of Arkansas. But I just don't think they have that high end um, potential like some of the other guys at the, the the top end of the draft. So could you get one of the top four? Could the Panthers get one of the top four at 65? Or you think they're all gone by then? Uh, I think they're all gone. Just because okay. I think once one of those centers goes in the draft, I think you're going to see a lot of them come off of the board just because there's such a steep drop off after those first four or five guys. Now, I don't think this next player is at a position the Panthers really need to be all that concerned right now addressing, and that's linebacker, especially considering the ones we talked about. But a lot of fans are wondering about Peyton Wilson at NC State. I feel like he's a first-round talent because of the knee injuries that date back to high school, date back in Hillsborough. That's probably a reason why there's a lot of concern about his long-term longevity in the NFL. Now, we have seen in Carolina, Thomas Davis had a ton of injuries. He was already in the NFL. I'm not going to say that. Peyton Wilson is going to be Thomas Davis, but still, he's a guy who's instinctual, who loves Luke Keekley, who's former Panther, great. What do you think about Peyton Wilson? Like, do you think he's a guy that, hell, if you're looking at best player available, would be worth getting in the second round, or is he going to be someone who's going to be later on in the draft, maybe third round, just because of the, the medicals? Well, I'll tell you what, if he does end up turning out like Thomas Davis, there won't be any <laughs> Panther fans that are complaining at all. Right. But- I mean, he, he's one of my favorite players to watch in this draft class. But once again, it all boils down to the durability. Um, how comfortable are you are are you with the medicals, with the knee and the shoulder and the things that negatively affected him throughout his career? But as far as strictly an on the field player, he's a first round talent without question. I think he's by far the most talented and the most distinctive linebacker in this draft class. And he just makes plays. And he was so infectious in that NC State defense. I mean, you can cut on any game last year. You saw number 11 making plays. And it wasn't just in coverage. He can make plays behind the line of scrimmage. He had a high number of tackles for loss last year, which is something that I value highly with Mm -hmm. linebackers, just because if you look at the tackle for loss numbers amongst NFL linebackers, the ones that you consider are elite, they're always at the top. So him having such a high number of tackles for loss last year at NC State, that's something that I value highly. And then also he's really good against the run too. Now he needs to get a little bit better with taking on and then disengaging, but I think that's something that he can get better at over time. So as far as just strictly an on-the-field talent, I'm with you. He's without question a first-round guy. But once again, you have to factor in the durability and the medical situation with him. So he probably ends up going late day two, early day three, if I had to guess. I I would be really surprised if he's there in the fourth round, Um, but I think he goes in the third round if I had to guess right now. So that sounds like a possibility at 65 potential for the Panthers. That's what they want to do. So I, I like yeah. hearing that, even though there's other needs with that player sitting there, knowing Shaq Thompson, he's not going to be around here probably after this season. That may be something to do. Quick one, corner. That's another position to look at. Do you think that's where they should go after a corner? Because J.C. Horn, there's questions about his fifth-year option where they pick that up. And then outside of that, yeah, they picked up Dane Jackson. But that's something they can get out of after a year. There's not really a long-term guy, even of Horn, on the roster that you can point to as being a starter for this team at that corner spot. I think it's probably later on in the draft just because with J.C., you still want to give him every opportunity to show that he's worthy of exercising that option. I know they have to make a decision on that um, coming up here soon. But with J.C., the thing that you always worried about, even when he was coming out of South Carolina, was just the durability issues. It just feels like he has those nagging injuries all the time. But the talent on the field, he's without question a high-end talent, but it's just a matter of how many games are you going to get out of him every year. And he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. But when he does play, the flashes of high-end talent show all the time. So you have to give yourself some insurance and and some security a little bit with developing probably a later-round guy um, just in case uh, eventually you end up separating from J.C. somehow. All right, sounds good. Great perspective there for Jordan Reed, ESPN NFL Draft Analyst, a native North Carolinian. Follow him on Twitter at Jordan underscore Reed. Also check out all his work on ESPN.com. You probably need to get the ESPN Plus subscription, by the way, too, to read more of his stuff. He does a great job along with Matt Miller, Mel Kuyper Jr., all the folks over there at ESPN. But appreciate your time on today's show, Jordan. Uh, We'll take a quick pause, wrap up the show here on Locked on Panthers. 
This next segment is brought to us by our sponsor, BetterHelp. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day? And personally, for me, on a Monday, I would love to get an extra hour just to sleep in to begin the week. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it if you're thinking of starting therapy get better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash locked on Good to catch up with Jordan Reed there of ESPN.com. He's an NFL draft analyst and loved his perspective on what the Panthers potentially could do there in the second round. And we've talked about it here on the show. I agree. Looking at the needs, wide receiver, outside linebacker slash edge, and then center. I've been talking about center since we did the series back in January and February about fixing the offensive line. And Austin Corbett's interesting to me. I would love for Austin Corbett to come back this year play at a high level and nail down the center position for the next two or three seasons, but he's not a long-term option at that position for the Panthers, which goes back to also what Jordan had to say about DJ Wonham and Jadeveon Clowney. Now for Wonham, he's coming off his rookie deal. He's had years where he has been productive like last year playing opposite of Daniel Hunter, but he's not a number one kind of alpha edge rusher and neither is Clowney at this point in his career and really never has he been in his career when he played opposite miles Garrett had some good numbers last year with that crazy Ravens defense he put up some great numbers which led to him to get the 20 million dollar 24 million max contract here in Carolina for the next two years and I'm happy that he's here because he's filling a big time need but you can look across this roster Josie Jewell Shaq Thompson, two stars at linebacker. They are not long-term options. Dane Jackson, yes, like one of them, coming off of his rookie deal, signing a two-year deal, but may not be a long-term option. If things work out for the best, he will be a long-term option and start at corner for the next couple of seasons. Just like with DJ Wonham, he would start at one of the edge rusher spots as a number two guy for the next three, four seasons or so. But across the roster, especially defensively in a secondary at safety, we didn't even talk about that. There's plenty of guys that are probably here for their last – year or two in Carolina. So the Panthers really can't just sit at any position and think we don't need to address that. Just knowing that outside of Derek Brown, hopefully fingers crossed JC Horn defensively, they don't have any long-term answers at those spots. And I would love to see them get an edge rusher. One of the Robinsons would be great. Uh, a wide receiver need to get one. Deontay Johnson, Adam Thiel, and Jonathan Mingo. I don't feel good enough about that. I feel great about what Johnson pr can provide. I feel good about what Thielen's going to be able to provide this upcoming fall. I don't expect the same numbers of last year, but having another capable wide receiver, that's going to help up Carolina Panthers as teams can't just key on Adam Thielen, which you could not have be the case once again. It provides Bryce more options, and it's going to open up some things for Thielen to maybe come close to the numbers he put up last year, even though I – I doubt whether that would be the case. I don't think the Panthers necessarily need him to have another 100 reception, 1,000-yard receiving season. Can he have four touchdowns again? That would be nice. And y'all know how I feel about Mingo. He's still coming along. I want Bryce Young to be in the best situation possible, knowing that he's not going to have a reliable pass-catching tight end. Y'all believe in Trimble. Trimble Hive is alive. That's just not where I'm at right now, and I just need to see it with Tommy Trimble. I want to see it, but I need to see it before really being a believer. I see two guys. Two options, and that's not enough for me when looking at Bryce Young this year. Having a better offensive line with the signings of Lewis and Hunt, I need him to have more options. So getting a wide receiver, Keon Coleman, I've been talking about him constantly. I don't understand. Okay, it's a separation. We talked about that last week with Trevor Sikama from Pro Football Focus about why some people aren't high on him. But when you watch the tape, you see explosive player. And if the separation is not great right now, and that's not to say it's never going to be good. Maybe he just needs to be coached up better. Were they coaching him that well at Michigan State and at Fl Florida State last year in Tallahassee? Were they doing that? Or were they just saying, hey, go out there and be an athlete, Keon? Was that what they were doing? If it comes down to coaching, with the amount of guys on this coaching staff who have coached wide receivers in the past, I'm not worried about that with Keon Coleman. And he fits the mold. Xavier Leggett, I have my concerns, as was brought up last week by Trevor. I share that. The man didn't do anything. 
into this past season. I had someone who tweeted at me and told me that because he had been a quarterback in high school, it took him some time. We've heard that about plenty of players who are quarterbacks, played other positions in high school and had not taken this long. Mike Sanderstrill, who is one of the top, if not the top nickel corner in this draft, started at Michigan as a wide receiver, then changed over to a nickel corner. Two years later, he's talked about as a day two pick. So he can do it. I don't really know what the excuse is for Xavier Leggett playing, I would believe, is an easier position because offense is always going to be easier than defense, especially how the rules are in today's football. Not to say he can't play great. I saw him play in Uptown against North Carolina. The dude was a stud, and that game was a stud throughout the season. And not having Juice Wells there for South Carolina this season opened up some things for him, but he stepped up and made some plays in the SEC, and you cannot ignore that. Looking at what he did compared to what Mingo did, yeah, I'll take Leggett because he actually produced at the SEC level, whereas Mingo didn't. So if he didn't do it then, why would I expect him to do it now in the NFL? But I know it's a tired point. You're probably hurt, tired of hearing it, but still, that's just that's how I feel. So wide receiver, absolutely need to do it. Edge rusher and center. Man, they can get a center. I would love to see it. Zach Frazier and Jordan believes that they're not going to have any of the top four guys available. I was shocked to hear him say Jackson Powers Johnson would be available at 33, and that – is a guy who a lot of people think is a top-rated center. I know Michael Mel Kiper Jr. has him in top-rated. We talked about Graham Barton out of Duke, who has played left tackle throughout his college career and then could come in and now play guard or center. A lot of teams look, in a, look at him as a center. If he wants to play center, this would be a great spot for him as he could come in and just wait for a year behind Austin Corbett or really compete with Austin Corbett as Corbett is learning how to play a center. Now, he's played it before back in Los Angeles during OTAs, but never live bullets in a regular season game in college or the NFL has Austin Corbett been a starting center for any team. So Graham Barton may be able to come in and compete right away. But if you drop Zach Frazier out of West Virginia or Jackson Powers Johnson, fingers crossed, out of, of Oregon, that's probably your starting center day one, and you're getting out of that Austin Corbett deal or using him as depth, which is, probably the smartest thing for the Panthers, but he's a guy maybe you could even trade knowing that he has been a starter at both of the guard spots throughout his career in the NFL. And Peyton Wilson would love to see it happen firsthand as a North Carolina fan. Watch that guy just wreak havoc on the heels and the heels have had some pretty damn good offenses the last couple of years of Sam Howell and Drake may. And that dude was amazing in a game in Raleigh back in November where the Tar Heels just completely no-showed and NC State whooped their ass up and down the field at Carter Finley that Saturday night. And it really was just a tribute to Peyton Wilson the entire night and in the post-game show. That is a guy that I said before personifies what a Carolina Panthers linebacker is supposed to look like. And also just that heart, that dog, that Dan, Dan Morgan – and I believe they've already had a top 30 visit with him. Dan Morgan gets in the room with that man. He may want to trade into the first round and take him. <laughs> he might want to trade with Chicago. He want to find a way to get the number one pick just to get him number one overall. That's going to be something I am interested to see. Because listening to what Jordan had to say, the fans are going to have some tough decisions to make. Do you get your center in the second round? Do you get your edge if none of these edge rushers are number one guys? And yes, getting bodies is important. But if none of our number one guys, wouldn't it make more sense just get a center? Get Jackson Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier instead of waiting until the third round where they may not be available or waiting until day four to get a Bo Limmer out of Arkansas or a Cedric Van Braun out of Georgia? Would it make more sense just to go ahead and best player available? Let's go get a center because that's a position that should be shored up for the next decade. Fingers crossed that's the case. Instead of getting someone who effectively would be your number two or really a rotational edge rusher would if he doesn't think chop Robinson is going to be that Darius Robinson, maybe he could be, I don't know. But if any of those guys were thought to be that they're probably going to be taken in the first round. No, I would think that would be the case. I'm excited. Really am. After talking to Jordan to see what happens as the Panthers have a lot of options, potentially well, <laughs> we have to see how night one, how that Thursday evening goes and know what their options are. But looking at it right now, yeah, they got some options and going to be some tough decisions to make once they get officially on the clock on Friday evening in Detroit later on this month. But that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, truly in council. Again, y'all, watch, subscribe to the show over on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite 
podcasts, rate, review, subscribe, and also be sure to follow me on Twitter at Julian Council on Twitter, where I will be here on Fridays answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to get those questions into me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole as always and forever. Don't you ever forget it. Keep pounding.